we're referring to the most reliable source on the internet to make this video, the Reddit comment section, because everybody there says everything that is 100% factually correct all the time, and there's never anybody that goes out there and fabricates or lies. Okay, no, I'm not being entirely serious with that. Take this entire video with a grain of salt, because we are heading to the comment threads in order to get our narrative. What I'm doing is I'm just replying and reacting to some of the things that I've seen in the Arcanuck sub over the past few hours, because when it comes to this idea, it directly responds to some of the stuff we've already talked about on this channel, and it adds an element of anger to it. So, without further ado, we are talking about Vancouver Canucks Superstar? Eh, Superstar, yeah, I guess you could say he's a superstar, I don't know, it's whatever. We're talking about Elias Pettersson today. Because, when it comes to the last time we had made a video strictly about him, it was yesterday in our David Peñota report video. Essentially, we went over the rumors that were brought upon by Panyota and his website that said that Elias Pettersson's contract offer that was on the table and given to him back in September was something in the eight-year, $12 million AAV range. The idea that was tossed out said that Pettersson and his party had the contract available to them, but because PD was very determined to secure his future, not just financially, but in terms of the on-ice results, he wants to be a part of a winner. And the philosophy was he would use this season without signing anything to make sure that Vancouver is indeed that spot before making his decision to commit. Commitment issues, right? We talk about these all the time. Some of y'all may have them. I'm guilty as charged sometimes, but... In this case, not willing to commit is totally fine, especially if you're a pro worker, you want the players to get their value, you want the players to exhibit the best working environments for their craft. But after this video and this idea was leaked out into the media, we had ourselves a few comments made by one, Rick Dollywall on Donnie and Dolly, and a few other sources as well. Elliot Friedman chipped in on this. There are a few other ideas tossed out there. This is where we turn to the Reddit comment threads in order to get our information because not everything that we're going to talk about was put on a tweet or anything, but because there was an episode of Donnie and Dolly earlier today on Friday, and because there have been podcasts by Elliot Friedman that were published as well, I do think it's okay to go out there and just read comments from the comment threads to get our narrative, but I can totally understand if any of y'all watching this video are like Lego, you're just ripping off comments from people on the Arcanox sub, like they could say whatever they want. I'm personally more believing in the goodwill of people just to have a conversation about things that they hear, and less believing in the cynicism that people would just lie about whatever it is they wanted. So let's head over to a common thread on Diet Foods post from about an hour ago. Listening to the morning show, and apparently there was a report PD was offered 12 by 8 in the summer. Take a look at the top reply from Pavlog's dog. A few days ago, David Peñota reported that the 12.8 number was offered to Petey at the beginning of the season, but, as you said, it was neither accepted nor rejected. Today, though, on 32 Thoughts, Elliot Friedman commented on Peñota's reporting and suggested that a real offer was never on the table, and that Peñota's reporting was to do with semantics. My interpretation of that comment is that maybe a number was discussed between Petey's agent and the Canucks organization, but no formal offer was ever tendered. I was half listening, though, so I could be off base. Dollywall also followed up today, most probably on Donnie and Dolly, saying that Peñota's report was not accurate. So, that is one idea that was tossed out there from both Friedman and Dollywall, that the 12 by 8 number was not reported properly, that maybe it was just an idea tossed out there, maybe there was no formal commitment, maybe the Canucks didn't specifically toss out the contract saying, hey, here, it's already written out, all you gotta do, PD, is just sign it, and then boom, you're back on this team till 2030, whatever the heck it's gonna be, I can't do math off the top of my head. And furthermore to this point, we had ourselves another comment made on a different Canucks thread. This is from the next day postgame thread from earlier this morning. Essentially, this is the postgame thread part two. So this one would be talking about yesterday's Seattle Kraken game. You're supposed to go out there and just discuss in a more rational headspace, I guess you could say, because yeah... Watching that game live, a lot of Canucks fans were pissed off. That's part of the reason I like to do the post-game video on the night of, mostly because it's like everybody still got the game fresh in their minds, but the quote-unquote next-day post-game thread is supposed to be greeted with a more rational mindset, and maybe everybody's got some sleep, so it's a little bit easier to go more appropriately when talking about this team. 
But either way, one of the top comments goes out there and says, Rick Dollywell says that Elias Pettersson's camp is pissed about that David Penyota report that came out. What report? Silent Polak replies, the report that he's been sitting on 12 million per for eight years since the start of the year. And initially when I saw this thread pop up, because this thread is older than the Elliot Friedman comments that we had just looked at earlier, from the way I interpreted these comments initially, I kind of thought, oh wow, Elias Pettersson's camp is pissed off that everybody knows that they got an 8 by 12 million dollar AAV offer? Like, why would they be ticked off about that? They must really not have wanted that to leak. And even some of the replies, like, oh, why would Pedersen be upset about that? I get he's supposed to desire privacy, but it seems like an odd thing to be upset about. Oh no, the team offered you a $12 million max term deal that made you one of the highest paid players in the league. How infuriating. Even if it's not true, it doesn't hurt his leverage that $12 million is the number that leaked out. And then there's another reply that says, yeah, it gives the fans opportunities to get upset at Petey for not accepting a fair offer. Everybody that would care about this knows that he's been very vocal about waiting until the offseason, though. That's the way I interpreted these comments at the beginning, too. But then, upon learning that it's, oh yeah, no, Pedersen wasn't really offered that. Like, once Dollywall said, yeah, no, that didn't happen, and once Friedman said, yeah, I don't think that Peñota's reporting was correct, all of a sudden now it's making sense. Oh, that's why the Pedersen camp is pissed off that this was leaked out, because apparently it didn't happen. Now, this is giving all the press, all the publicity, all of the spotlight on Pedersen. Oh, he's got a $12 million AAV deal. He's got that money on the table. He just didn't sign it. Wow, he doesn't want to commit to Vancouver. It paints the Pedersen party in a really bad light, especially if it didn't actually happen. And now we have even more discourse starting out on social media. It's all over Twitter. It's all over Instagram. You scroll into the comments section and you'll see people saying, hey, that guy's not worth $12 million. And then people reply saying, no, but he is. Like, he's literally one of the best players in the league. He's one of the top point producers in the entire gosh darn NHL. What's there not to believe in when he's so young and he's still got more room to grow? And this is where the entire semantics argument gets in play, where you talk about what Pedersen is now versus what he could be. The point is we all know he can be better than what he's shown off over the past few weeks. We know that at his best, he is way better. When he's not really just sticking around in the perimeter, when he's actually making passes and taking shots, when he's not falling down every other shift, there is an effective two-way caliber, offensively dynamic, playmaking sniper here that is so all-around in terms of his offensive ability that it's kind of insane to think about the ceiling. But that ceiling has not been anywhere within reach over the past few weeks. So now with this slump going on and this reported number where he didn't really accept a $12 million AAV deal, it kind of gets people frustrated. And now the Pedersen camp is apparently pissed off about this too. I mean, let's do the math. Eight times 12. Pedersen would have not signed a $96 million contract. Like... He was very adamant about waiting until the offseason, so I get it, you know, you could very well say that was always going to be the plan, but to not take $96 million when it's presented in front of you on a check, all you gotta do is sign off and agree to it? That idea is nuts. So I could understand why there would be some frustration there if people are fully buying into that idea. Hey, you guys didn't accept a $96 million contract? What's wrong with you? So, at the end of the day, Pedersen is going through a pretty rough stint on the ice, and these rumors about his contract negotiations don't make it any better. I wanted to go out there and make this video talking about how the camp is apparently pissed off. Again, all this information is coming off of Reddit threads because I could not find the particular quotes from the shows on Twitter or anything else, so please, if anybody has, like, the timestamps to Donnie and Dolly's most recent segment as well as 32 Thoughts as to where these comments were made, then let me know in the comments We'll try to get some sort of a thing going on where we can verify everything, but for now, I'm just trusting the word of our Canucks commenters. I don't have reason to really believe that they're kind of lying about this, so I don't know. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not my judgment is appropriate or not, but thoughts in the comments as well about Elias Pettersson and this contract situation. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye.